Per Hindustan Times, India's PM Narendra Modi visited the so-called Arunakal Pradesh on Sep 22. In Itanagar, its fake capital, he laid foundation for Hio and Tato I hydropower projects to tap the Siam River's hydropower and boost sustainable energy. This sparked big online buzz, on the surface, India's building in a sensitive area, but really, it shows its hydropower infrastructure ambitions and challenges. Now let's break this down with Brother Manton. What shape is India's hydropower construction capacity really in? Everyone knows India's got great water resources, lots of rivers, plenty of rain and top-tier global hydropower potential. According to IHA data, India's total annual hydropower potential is approximately 660,000 GWH. Viable capacity 148.7 GW large plus 6.8 GW small. But even though India's Gov sees hydropower as key for energy transition, the reality is its share in the power mix has dropped from 24.75% to 9.57, almost cut in half. Even India's power minister said, as of 2023, it only uses 29% of its hydropower potential, while the US and EU use over 80% and 70% respectively. Now you might wonder why is India leaving such great hydropower resources unused, while coal, solar, wind power keep growing in its energy mix. The key isn't whether India wants to do it, it's whether it can. Many projects start ambitiously, planning thousands of megawatts when approved, but hit roadblocks once construction starts. Like India's Renewable Watch noted in 2024, its hydropower projects face complex challenges weak execution, strong public pushback, frequent natural disasters. First, the most obvious issue, execution. Per India's Parliamentary Energy Committee, Indian hydropower projects take 14 years on average way longer than the Global 5. 76% of large ones are delayed over 9 years, take Subin Siri lower, started 2007, meant to launch 2010. Now nearly 20 years on, it's only set to test 3 units in 2025, connect the rest in May 2026. Even India's top five operational hydropower projects couldn't avoid delays. Sardar took 56 years, Nehru laid its foundation 1961, Modi inaugurated in 2017. Terry, conceived 1949, only got some units online 2007 over half a century too, and its pumped storage is still testing. Low efficiency isn't even the only problem social pushback is huge too. Hydropower projects need large-scale land acquisition and resettling locals. Resettlement sparks resistance over low compensation and no livelihood support. Environmental groups protest ecological damage, even pseudo-hall projects. The government's stuck, no solutions. Sandrup's 2022 report of, of 47 Northeast India hydropower projects. 32 of them ended up getting stuck either because people protested or there were environmental lawsuits. And that's a huge 68% of the total. Take the Penan hydropower project. Still stuck, no clear end date. Locals say it'll harm forests, rivers, cultural sites, so the environment ministry repeatedly rejected its permit. Also, since 2010, the Lower Dem project near Kamlang Wildlife Sanctuary and Parsharam Khan has been stuck in approvals. Strict eco rules blocked forest permits. Locals objected to land acquisition. It still hasn't fully started. Then technically, India's always relied on foreign help for hydropower from Soviet British aid in the 60s, to ABB Swiss Swedish, GEUS, Andritz Austria in the 90s, to foreign gear, consultants, outsourcing now. India still can't make large turbines over 250 megawatts or tunnel gear for tough geology on its own, Subin Siri lowers 8 by 250 megawatts units are from USG. NAFPA Jackery uses European ABB. TSTE gets gear from Austria's Andritz Hydro plus lots of European consultants. Money's another big issue. Orff says India's hydropower investment leans hard on the public sector. Private investors avoid high risks, tough geology, costly resettlement, and their capacity share is under 10%. Also, international funding has trust issues. Cross-border disputes like India-Pakistan ones over Kishan Ganga and Radal Herd Cooperation Trust. Complex funding structures and poor risk management make it less attractive. Take Nathpa Jakri Dam. Floods damaged it, severe delays. The World Bank almost cancelled it over India's execution concerns. It also made future funding harder. We also gotta talk about how tedious the approval process is. India's hydropower approval process is super complicated, usually needing nods from central and local agencies for environment, land, forests, and water. Normally, it takes three to five years from project idea to getting all permits and starting construction, but most projects actually face long delays from admin, legal, and social issues. 
Take the Edelin project in Arunakal Pradesh, it was supposed to start earlier, but it's still on hold since 2022 waiting for forest permits, pushing approvals back at least two years, the more extreme case, Sardar Saravar Dam, laid in 1961, but only started building in 1987. Gujarat and Maharashtra fought for years over water rights. The central gov tried mediating many times, but it still held up the project for decades. Finally, let's talk about challenges from regional traits. Per India's CEA, nearly 70% of India's developable hydropower is in the southern Himalayas and surrounding northeast. That area holds 62 gigawatts of potential about 42.7% of the total and it's the main hub for India's hydropower projects. This area is on a tectonic plate boundary, frequent earthquakes, and monsoon rains easily trigger landslides or mudslides. The natural conditions themselves set up risks for hydropower projects. Also, northeast India has lots of rivers like the Brahmaputra and its tributaries with great hydropower potential, but its power grid's been weak for years a core bottleneck for power transmission. Even if projects finish, much power can connect efficiently to the main grid for power-hungry industrial hubs in the south or west only used inefficiently locally. The region's rough terrain also makes grid building harder. Power lines need to cross deep valleys and virgin forests. Costs are over 40% higher than in plains, which makes upgrading infrastructure even tougher. Basically, India is in the global top 5 for hydropower potential, but six big hurdles stop at weak delivery, strong public pushback little tech autonomy, big money gaps, messy approval processes, and tons of regional issues. Nothing to show for it anytime soon. Modi breaking ground for Hio and Tato I in southern Tibet shows its hydropower ambition. But past cases, Sardar Dam took 56 years, Subban Siri delayed nearly 20, Edelin stuck in approvals to .so will these new projects finish on time? Still a big question mark.